Hey everyone, Matt here. I'm taking a brief look at the new features in the Complete Control 1.6 update. We're going to focus on three areas of improvement here. The improved integration with Logic and GarageBand, browsing from the hardware, and new advanced arpeggiator functions. So check this out. So here's a common scenario you might find yourself writing inside of Logic. You got a couple instances of Complete Control loaded up as a template, and you just start writing quickly and easily like this. Of course, I can control everything by simply turning the knobs and having the, the mappings automatically there for me. And of course, also, the light guide really enables me to kind of get around and know what instruments I'm playing, whether it's a battery drum kit, or maybe a contact drum kit, right? Really helpful, again, is this light guide, some sophisticated drum program like this, and I can see all my cymbals are in yellow, hi-hats are in red, uh, green, snares are in red. Very helpful. And of course, I can just bounce back and forth using any of these, uh, using the arrows to get between each instrument. So maybe I want to write a piano part. Let's talk about how the Logic and GarageBand integration has been improved. So the first thing, if we come to the preferences, we can get into the control surfaces and set up a proper instance of complete control. Simply come to the new install and select it from the list. This is great because before you used to have to kind of use a Mackie Huey emulation or a generic third party controller. Now there's a dedicated NI complete control and you can basically bet that NI can add more features or have it more stable in general this way. So if we get out of there, let's see what it actually does. The obvious things would be play, stop, right? You can uh, fast forward, click multiple times to speed it up. I can turn my loop on and off. I can hold down loop and turn the encoder to move the loop range wherever I need. I can also just use the encoder to jump by bars back and forth. So if you really need to get through your timeline real quick, you can just kind of wrench your wrist and, and really get through it. I can hold, uh, what else can we do? Shift stop, we'll turn the metronome on. And off. And I can also toggle the count in. So maybe I want to actually get a one bar count in to write this piano part. You can also hold down shift and use the left arrow to undo or the right arrow to redo. So really, you'd never have to really be touching the mouse too much if you want to quickly get in here and start writing. So let's take that out and let's go down and find a new instance of complete control. So we have a new instance loaded up and the first thing you're going to notice is when I hit browse, there is a brand new category type and this category is called vendor. So now we can search for specific instrument vendors. So all my native instruments products are in here. It doesn't matter whether it's a sample based Abbey Rhodes drums or a synthesizer like FM8. They're all under one hood in that category of vendor. I can even hold down shift arrow, uh, and encode over and I'll be able to get through each subsequent vendor. So if I really need to get to the end real quick to Zill's lab, it's really quick to get there or right back to the beginning, which is super helpful. So the other great improvement is if we come into File, Edit, Preferences, we can now come to the hardware and select between on-screen overlay or hardware browsing. And for me, this is the best addition right here because now when I browse, I can see it right from the controller. And I really appreciate this because I almost feel like it's faster in some ways. Maybe I want to get to Yuhi real quick and select Diva and I can see it all right from here. This is an important note too, because a lot of people have a complete control set up, you know, off to the side in their studio, and you don't really want to be like wrenching your neck trying to find that on-screen overlay when you could just see it right here from the keyboard. Super helpful. So I can bounce back and forth between factory and user with these buttons, and I can also hold shift to get to my favorites, which is even faster than the on-screen overlay. So let's go find favorites from Diva. Let's go find bass and load up one of my favorite presets. And 
And of course you can adjust everything right away. So now let's take a look at the arpeggiator. Simply turn it on and it works just like we would think. So if we come into the settings, everything here is the same, but on page two, we have new advanced features. A little while ago, we added the uh, arpeggiator hold, which is still there. And now you have re-trigger, repeat, offset, inversion, and then min and max key range, which is a nice addition. So let's look first at what repeat would do. Maybe you want it to basically double up before hitting the next note in the arpeggiator, or triple, all the way up to eight steps. So you can play with that in real time and come up with interesting patterns. Next would be inversion. So watch what happens if I just play a D minor triad and start turning up the inversion. It's basically going to play chord inversions and then sequence through the notes in the arpeggiator in a spe specific way. And this works both up or down. It doesn't matter what direction you're going. Just designated by the mode. And this is what it actually looks like. If you look in the software, we can actually see that these are the way those notes in that D minor triad would be played back from this arpeggiator with the inversion all the way up. So you can kind of get new interesting patterns just by adjusting a couple inversions and then also by adjusting the offset, which is basically going to trigger how those notes are played. So they're going to come in different patterns. positive and negative amounts. So it's really cool. You can get different, more interesting patterns. And then retrigger is basically going to select how many steps are going to play in that arpeggiator before the arp starts right over. So maybe you set it to one, it's just going to be locked, two, back and forth. I have four notes that cycle through all, but it gets more interesting maybe if you do six, for instance. have a lot of fun just basically playing some notes and then messing with these knobs. Maybe you want to resample in real time uh, while you're making these changes for more sophisticated patterns. And then of course you can adjust your key range. So maybe we just want to play C3 and the up. Whereas now, oops, C3, sorry. The arpeggiator is not working down here. So why is that important? Well, you could do something interesting like play bass lines. Let's make this a polyphonic instance and we could basically kind of like hold the triad. Right, however you like. So lots of great new additions. I mean, Complete Control keeps getting better, always with these free updates. You got so many things you could key in on whether you can control your DAW now, whether you have a sophisticated arpeggiator, whether you have advanced light guides depending on what instrument you're using, whether you have instant control over a sound without having to think about mapping it. It's just a fantastic controller. In my opinion, it's the best keyboard controller out there on the market. So hopefully you enjoyed this and stay tuned for more updates in the future.